Hey guys, so let's talk about surrealism. Uh, surrealism was a 20th century liter literary and artistic movement that attempts to express the workings of the subconscious and is characterized by fantastic imagery and incongruous juxtaposition of subject matter. Wow, that's a whole lot of fancy words. But what this really means is that it started out as a literary movement, so people were writing in a surrealist style, and then it became a um, painting style, okay? Um, and what it basically encompasses is connecting the subconscious mind, so things that you don't realize you're thinking about, um, and dreams, right, with um, fantastic imagery, so crazy images, things that don't really make sense, just complete dream-like um, qualities, okay, and putting things together that don't really necessarily belong together um, to create new subject matter for paintings and and writings. Okay. So like I said, it became, I started out as a literary movement during the 19 teens and 20s. Um, and again, it eventually became artistic, intellectual, and political mu movement. It was influenced by Dada, which we've talked about before, and Karl Marx, but also about by Sigmund Freud. Now, I'm not sure if you guys know who Sigmund Freud is, but he was um, a famous psychi psychiatrist, really, kind of the father of the, one of the fathers of the field, um, who was the first to really push the importance of the subconscious and the importance of dreams. Okay, so that becomes a really central part of surrealism. In literature, um, what they would do is using Freudian methods of free association. So that's the thing where somebody tells you one word and then you have to come up with whatever pops into your head, right, because of that word. Um, so they were, writers were using this technique and what they ended up with was really weird, um, different, um, very surprising kind of imagery that they would create. It first showed up uh, in 1924 in the Surrealist Manifesto. It was kind of the first journal that was published. Um, and what they call it, why it's called Surrealism, is because Surrealism was a means of reunited, con re reuniting sorry, conscious and unconscious realms of experience so completely that the world of dream and fantasy would be joined to the everyday rational world in an absolute reality, a surreality. So what they're saying is, it's more than just reality because you add that dreamlike and that fantasy element to it. Okay, here's an example of a surrealist poem by Antonin Artaud from 1926. Dark poet a maid's breast haunts you and bittered poet life seethes and life burns and the sky reabsorbs itself in rain. Your pen scratches at the heart of life. Forest, forest alive with your eyes on multiple pinions. With storm-bound hair, the poets mount horses, dogs. Eyes fume, tongues stir. The heavens surge into our senses like blue mother's milk. Women harsh, vinegar hearts. I hang suspended from your mouth. So it's very dreamlike, um, very strange. And we perhaps are a little bit used to this kind of thing because we've seen it um, in in our culture for a long time. But when this first came out, this was kind of crazy. People kind of flipped out because nobody had any, ever done anything like this before. So some examples of some um, surrealist painters, Max Ernst, André Masson, Jean, Jean Miro, Man Ray, Marcel Duchamp, Pablo Picasso, Giorgio de Circo. Hopefully some of those are ringing some bells. But let's look at some examples. Max Ernst his work. So again, you see a very dreamlike quality. Stuff that really doesn't exist in real life, or if it does, it's manipulated to be kind of a dreamlike quality. This, I think, was inspired by grain silos that he walked by every day. Perhaps the most famous surrealist of all time is Salvador Dali. He is brilliant. Um, Again, see his mustache. He was one of those artists who was quite famous for the way he looked as well. There's actually a whole book on um, Dali's mustache and all the different weird things that he did with it. So here's some of his work. Very um, surrealist, but also very technically talented, very beautifully painted works. Um, if you get the chance to go up to San Francisco, the SF MoMA has some Dali's that are just breathtaking in person. So here we see some re re repeated forms, but in different ways. Bizarre kind of stuff. This painting is called Sleep, and this is supposed to represent that feeling, you know when you're about to fall asleep, 
but then all of a sudden you imagine yourself tripping or something and your whole body jerks, this is what that represents. So you're just kind of on the edge. His long-legged horses, these are really famous. And perhaps the most famous painting he's ever done were the melting clocks. And you see this parodied all the time. Um, it wasn't just men who were surrealists. There were plenty of female surrealists. Leonora Carrington, perhaps, is one of the most famous. So her work is very sort of dark. Um, she had a lot of mental health issues, so it kind of shows in her work. Super random. No explanation needed. Just very dreamlike. Okay, and then surrealism is still happening. Um, it never stopped. So here are some great examples of more modern surrealist paintings. This is a good one for your painting, I mean your drawing. So keep those in mind. It's basically like either your most beautiful dreams or your biggest nightmares <laughs> come to life. Or sometimes we see shapes and images in everyday life, and um, these painters just sort of brought them to life. I guess that's what elephants actually sound like. All right, so let's talk about your assignment. What you're going to do is you're going to draw a house in two-point perspective. Um, a complicated house. So see how this one's very simple, just one box? You're actually going to connect two boxes to do this. I, want, uh, I don't want matchstick little houses like this, but um, generally some, something like this where you have the windows, a certain number of doors. Um, notice the porch on this one and the stairs or, and the um, chimney. Those are other things that you can add. Okay, And then you're going to add a surrealist element to your drawing. So maybe you have a tiny little house and a flower or just some weird random stuff going on. This one is like an igloo, but also an observatory. The Mario Brothers house. Weird face house. <laughs> Just randomness. Okay. And you're going to do this in Prismacolor. Colored pencil. And I will uh, make a video to show you how to do that. More examples, random, just throw in an elephant. This one's in three-point perspective, so this is the challenge level that I would be talking about. Okay, and then they're going to have certain things like an angled roof, seven windows, two doors, have an extra feature like a balcony, chimney, or porch, and be made up of two connected boxes. Okay, so remember, anything goes, I want you to be creative and get crazy.